Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Justice, I am joined here by Terramaster, and we are here today to talk to all of you about the Speed Duel uh, ban list, because while it has done a lot of good things for the format, there are some ways in which we felt it could be improved. So we wanted to make some changes uh, to share with all of you. Uh, we did want to keep it as a light touch. Uh, we didn't want to go crazy and change a ton of things, but there are a few cards we felt needed to be added to the list, a few that we felt could be taken off, especially since the ban list is still officially a, on a uh, per-event basis. Uh, we felt it didn't really need to be future-proof, so to speak, so it really is just supposed to be reflective of the current map, since it technically can be changed at any time. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to try to make the format a little better, a little healthier. Not, so, not only that, also there's a, there's a long time between products, so uh, future-proofing yeah. doesn't really make sense when yeah. you're future-proofing for something that's uh, months away at, at best. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it, and I'm going to start us off with, at the very top, you might notice something a little different than the list we currently have, which is that we actually have a forbidden section. Uh, there is only... Banned! Uh, there is only one card on it, but it is Waking the Dragon, uh, the card that has actually, in our opinion, overtaken Zoma for the title of most unhealthy card in the format. Which was yes. not an easy feat to accomplish, but it, it managed to do it. Um, this format, as we know, is very, very kind to stall. And one of the things that makes stall so good is the fact that uh, you can't just blind hit their back row, because if you do, you might just lose the game on the spot. Uh -huh. And yeah, just a single card that can win the game on its own, even if it is conditional, just totally unhealthy. Really bad that we can't actually hit back row. It's got the, it. The conditionality of it actually might, in some ways, make it worse. Where if I'm the aggressive player playing against the stall player, I sometimes don't want to blind hit back row, right? Where sometimes the best time to hit a back row is blindly right after your opponent sets it in the end phase or by night beaming it. And mm -hmm. both of those options become very bad with the existence of waking the dragon, right? Just the the thought of, oh, I might instantly lose the game if I try to take out what could be a battle trap or, you know, just a nightmare wheel or whatever it is, right? Before I know what it is, is that's not... It's not a healthy state for the game to be in, where the player who's proactively trying to advance the game state is is punished for doing so. Yep. Yep. Agreed entirely. So yeah, a card that can, on its own, instantly win the game. No good. Get it out of here. Can't even be limited one. It just, it's got it. Uh, you want to bring us into our limit one section, and we can talk about, I think, two of the cards on there at the same time, if you want to go for that. Yeah, sure. Um, we should talk about two of the cards on there at the same time, and uh, these won't... And, and it's just because these two go together so well, and these are the new cards we threw on the Limit 1 list, and that's Golden Ladybug and a Twisted Personality, the skill. So this is aimed at one particular deck of, you know, the, the top decks right now. Uh, this one is arguably, I think you would argue with me, uh, the most annoying, by far, to play against yep. of uh, any relevant deck in Speed Duels right now. Um, mostly because the deck has no incentive to do anything because they will... Uh, they stand there with Golden Ladybug, they gain life points, they add counters with their own cards in the Volcanic Shell effect, or if you hit them, they add counters, so they're gaining life points they're uh, taking damage themselves. They're baiting. They're they're begging you to take give them some damage. Essentially, at some points in the game, once it once they get set up with all of that in place, with a couple of TP counters with Golden Ladybugs in hand, and like you know some presence on the field, whether that's just one Blaze Accelerator and one monster or more back row on top of that, it becomes an incredibly difficult deck to play. And the biggest issue with it isn't like the competitive challenge of beating the deck 
It's more of the style of gameplay that it creates and that that style of gameplay is a top tier style of gameplay, right? Um, I think it's it's pretty clear based on some of our other choices on this list as well. We wanted to give a hit to stall. We didn't want to make stall like we didn't want to just, you know, ban every stall card, right? But we wanted to definitely tone down the power of stall. It's no secret right now that Speed Duels has a lot more tools for stall than it does for basically any other style of play. And we just wanted to tone down the power of that a bit. So if you want to play Twist of Personality, okay, you're not gaining life through Ladybug. You want to gain life through Ladybug, A, you only get one, and B, you don't get to play TV. Right. So. so it's, it's those two cards together that it's not just Volcanic, right? Anytime there is a card printed in the future that requires you to pay life points to activate it, uh, TP is going to be good, right? So because of that, I think it's important to just say like, okay, you're going to do, if you're going to do any of that, you're not going to be able to gain those life points back by just sitting there and doing nothing. Yep. So good that guy i think i think that pretty much covers our our thoughts on that just you know stop it. yeah um the, <laughs> uh we left jinzo and zoma where they were we feel like those actually make a lot of sense uh both being limit one there was definitely a time where we would have moved zoma to the forbidden list but honestly seeing the current state of the meta zoma is not seeing a whole lot of play the fact that it conflicts with things like jinzo and now even tp as well um means that Maybe it's all right. And without waking, we might see more back row hate. So we might see more answers to Zoma being more commonly played with this list. So I felt like, OK, let's leave it at one for now. Uh, what I do want to talk about with our limit one list, is actually the cards that we removed, which are reinforced yeah. from the army and foolish burial. Uh, yes. And that is simply because there's just no real reason for them to be limited right now. There's no decks that it's like, oh, if they have three Rota, they're just going to pop off. Heroes are going to be insane. You know, no, uh, it's just what? not that way. I can, I can search Sparkman three times. <laughs> Holy That's crap. Incredible. Not that good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and honestly, like Foolish, okay, yeah, I mean, it, there's decks that, like Unions will benefit from that. Uh, and we'll talk more about Unions actually in the next section as well. Um, but like there's other strategies that maybe could benefit, you know, that aren't seeing play right now. Like, I mean, Water Dragon's bad, but maybe if it has more Foolish targets, it gets slightly less bad. Um, there's some other decks out there, too, that, like, are probably not going to be good if they can run multiple Foolish, but hey, let's give them the option and, you know, maybe they go from complete trash to rogue tier or maybe tier three, right? Like, let's give right. them that choice. There's just, there's nothing we feel Foolish is breaking right now. And again, this is an example of us not future-proofing this list, because I'm sure at some point in the future, Foolish probably does need to be on it. Uh, yes. But right now, it doesn't. So we yeah, uh, Rota probably does need to be on at some point in the future yes. too. When yeah. the as the pool of warrior monsters continues to grow, but with everything we have right now, like it's it's either DD Warrior Lady, Amazonist Swordswoman, or an Elemental Hero, all of which are like okay, sure, yeah. you know, whatever. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, all right, let's move on to the limit two. Uh, I'll start just because it is in alphabetical order. Obviously, just for cleanliness of the list, Cocoon Parasite are where they are. That's totally fine. Uh, one of our new additions is Floodgate Trap Hole. We talked about trying to hit stall a bit, and actually being in the Limit 2 section does a few things. One, it conflicts with Nightmare Wheel. Um, while Wheel has dropped in popularity, uh, any pure stall deck might still want to run it. So you can now not run, you know, two Nightmare Wheel, three Floodgate. Uh, you, those now will conflict with each other, which is good. It also means that even if you're not running Wheel, you cannot run triple Floodgate. Uh, so one thing that you pointed out while we were talking about it, which I really actually liked, was the idea that there are now fewer floodgates in a deck than there are monster zones. Yeah. So unless you're recycling floodgate in some way, you cannot floodgate all three zones, uh, no. which is very, very good. Uh, yeah. So, so to, to, like to lock all three zones now, you have to draw both floodgates and then draw something to recycle them with. And then if that recycle card doesn't put it directly in your hand, you'll have to draw them again. Yeah. So that, funny enough, just cutting down just one Floodgate even, decreases the, the, the total max potential of Floodgate by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's good. You want to talk about our, our other new addition to Limit 2 list? 
Yes, uh, we did talk about hitting stall, and uh, Volcanic is the best stall deck right now, yes, but the other one that's still around is Ratbox. So uh, we went back and forth on this, and, uh, you know, Golden Ladybug was running a few Ratbox decks, but it, it's not really a hit to it. Uh, Floodgate is somewhat of a hit to it, right, especially sharing a spot with Wheel. But uh, we felt like that wasn't enough, and uh, seeing as stall is something we wanted to hit as hard as reasonably possible... Uh, Giant Rat wasn't the right target, and this was, like, my opinion, mm -hmm. but uh, I thought it was Zombina was the right one to hit, because Zombina is the issue, right? Zombina is the card that creates the loop. Zombina is the card that doesn't care if it's destroyed by card effect, uh, such as, you know, Blaze Accelerator or Dragoon. It still works. So, I think Zombina is the problem card, because, like, Rat, what are you going to do? Float? three times into maybe other rats, maybe one of your box targets, like, okay, then what, right? Zombina is the then what. Yeah. So without Zombina, the deck loses a lot of its like late mid to late game power, I think. So we're kind of making you choose to either have Zombina as your mid to late game power or keep, you know, most of your floodgate trap holes, essentially, right? Yeah. So I like it a lot for that reason. As I said, Zombina really does a lot for the deck. So yeah, I like this hit. Uh, moving on to what we took off of the Limit 2 list. Uh, first is Allure of Darkness, because just why? Like, I, I don't why. <laughs> there is no good deck running any number of Allure. No, like, no. let them have three for now. Again, something that later on needs to be on the list, probably. Yes. But probably. right now... Uh, and then also, yeah, we took Union Hanger off the list, because meh. I mean, they eroded the Union skill, right? So it yeah. really means that cards that help Union don't need to be on the list anymore, including uh, Scramble and including Foolish, which we already talked about. Yeah, so. and like, so this is what I said, Foolish, you know, helps Union. So Hanger being off the list helps Unions. The only potential card would be Scramble. I think if we were to, in the future, decide, okay, we want to put something for Unions on the list, honestly, I think it would be Scramble because that is the biggest power card of the deck. So that would be something to revisit in the future if unions became too powerful with this list. But right now, with the errata, unions are not in the best spot. So let's see if this lets them be playable. At the very least yeah, I mean, the union skill is a minus one now, right? So you're essentially going minus one to summon a monster that then goes one for one, which is completely fine. Uh, Alright, so let's move on to limit three. Uh, most of this is going to look familiar. Four cards out of the five that we have are currently on the limit three list. We felt that Book, Breaker, Cosmic, DD Warrior Lady all made sense where they are. Um, I went back and forth on Cosmic a little bit, but then I thought, you know what, without waking, now that back removal is better, let's keep Cosmic where it is. Uh, I think it makes sense. It's um, the tiniest little, like, you know, check on on super aggressive decks right right because that's the thing while we did want to tap down stall we didn't want to just say okay otk is the best way to go now period um so yeah. little bit of you know little something the one addition we made is crystal conclave or crystal uh clown cave if you're a member of the SEO community yes. um because crystal beasts are one of the best decks in the format and so basically what this is doing is you can still run three conclave but if you do you get less generic good stuff so whether that be breaker or dd warrior lady or even book of moon although i don't think they were usually on book i think it was usually breaker or dd yeah. um they were on so now you have to find other ways of having that power because honestly i would have loved it on something with looking into the future but the problem is that i couldn't find a great way of putting looking into the future along with something else from the deck without it just totally messing up the deck yes. because if we did like looking plus conclave at limit three well now you're just overkilling and if yeah. i did it at limit two so that it's not conflicting with breaker and dd well then i'm saying you can only run two conclaves so like that's not great so there just wasn't a great way to do that mm. um with the dueling style list so we just say, you know what, Conclave at three, so you can't just run it at three with Breaker and DD, so find some other way of, you know, making your deck uh, good, and I'm sure it still can. I don't think this kills Crystal Beast by any means, um, no. but it just gives them access to a little less generic good stuff, which I thought was the right way to go about it. Yes, because, uh, look, Crystal Beasts are strong, right? Their, their traps are strong. You, they have six pieces of removal in their deck. 
uh, especially with the, the skill that they choose to use, looking, which we talk about, to stack their deck. Um, the, what they don't need, which is the point of all this, is good generic cards on top of that, which essentially help them negate their weakness. So right. that's that's really the reasoning here. Um, and it's like, again, it's like a very tiny hit to the deck. Like, hey, you lose your staples, right? Where, like, that's, I think to me, the best, like, mild hit to a deck is to say, okay, not going to hit your core strategy at all, but no more staples. Right. And that's pretty much what's happening here. And I think that's a, that's a healthy, that's a healthy hit to, to the deck. Yeah, I think it's the right way to go about it. Um, all right, so that was our only new addition. So let's talk about what we removed, uh, which is actually only one card off limited three list, which was Metaverse. Because <laughs> again, in current format, why? why? Why was this ever on that list to begin with? Let 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 the water players have some fun, Konami. Yeah. They want to run Metaverse and Book or Cosmic or whatever it is. Freaking go nuts, man. Just do right, it. Right, like, <laughs> fine. Yeah, like just run your three Metaverse three book. It's okay. Yeah. Why why do we have to be like weird about that? Why? Yeah, it's I, I like current list, the official list, honestly was so much of future proofing a list that is still officially event to event. Like that just makes no sense. It yeah, it really doesn't. Like, like it, I think it was just like a, you know, we don't know much about speed duels. These cards are all limited in advance. Limit it. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, that it felt like that. Um, so finally, I want to address a few cards that I've seen other people talk about that we felt did not uh, merit being on the list. Um, one of the big ones that stood out to me, well, I'll put two in one category, the Battle Traps, like Widespread Ruin, Wall of Disruption. Those are healthy to have in a format, honestly. Like, I get the argument against Wall of D, but like, I know you talked about it too. It's like, yeah, sometimes it's really good. And then other times it's like, well, I guess... Minus 800. Yeah. Um, especially as we have now enabled more backer removal to be played fearlessly by banning waking. Yeah. Like, I think battle traps are fine. And the ones we have are not insane. It's not like we have mirror force or uh or drowning, you know, or torrential tribute, which I know is not a battle trap, but like, you know, things like that. You know, like the ones we have are okay. Like, I think they need we need some amount of interaction. And I think the the way people think about it a lot of times is every single card being added to the current list in a vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. So if we added nothing else and you were like, well, is your options are add Wall of D or do nothing, then maybe. But you have to think about things in the context of, okay, we are already adding Waking the Dragon to the list, right? Right allowing for every single potential answer to wall and widespread ruin automatically gets stronger yep. so in that context it no longer makes battle traps feel anywhere near as threatening right one you play around it people do that anyway right you make it a minus 800 okay good job um, and then two, you you play Breaker and Night Beam and Dust Tornado or Cosmic and Night Beam and Dust Tornado if, if you're the type of deck that, you know, um, requires that to, to go in and win the game quickly. You play three copies of Crystal Raigeki if you're Crystal Beast to hit <laughs> yeah. that back row, right? So, and, and you're not worried about it anymore. You're blindly destroying every phase down card your opponent sets down there. What are they going to have? Wild Tornado? Okay, so... Okay. Yeah. Then, like, cool. That's... If that's it, like... That's the thing is like they're still punished about removal. Like we have Wild Tornado if that's what you need right. to do. But Wild Tornado being the punished back row is so much healthier than Waking the Dragon being the punished tobacco removal. Mm -hmm. Like that's fine if that's the way we go. Um, I will say, and I want to try to close this out so this isn't an insanely long video, which, you know, is kind of our specialty, but whatever. Um, personally, so uh, first I'm going to toot my own horn. Uh, in the season four, which was what April through September, I believe, the season four yeah. leaderboard for SDL, uh, I was third place overall in points, one point behind first place, but I did it only like really playing in ma major events. I had one speed duel showdown, and everything else was major events. You know, whereas first and second place played you know a lot more of the smaller stuff. So like, hey, yay me! Uh, so like, I actually had a really good season. Four. You played uh, like a couple of you. You played a couple of locals. 
Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got a couple. That's true. Okay. So, yeah. All right. But, well, I forget but, but that. Definitely, I forget. definitely significantly less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so like I had a really, really good season four. I, you know, I played a little bit more than I had in past seasons, had a lot of success. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Uh, right now, season five, which is midterm format. I haven't played it all. I don't see myself playing anytime soon. And honestly, a lot of it is just how like boring the format is. And like, while part of that is just we need better cards and better skills, part of it is just that like everything just seems to come down to stall at the end of the day. Uh, and I, it's just it's very, very boring. And honestly, just even as we're talking about this list, I'm already in my head thinking about like things that could be interesting to play with just these few minor changes yeah. and how much more uh, like exciting this one. Could be. Yeah, I, I think another issue is that without an updated list, right, something that we've done here, midterms did nothing yeah. for for competitive play, like actually nothing. We just it had so uh, Speedo League series, I think. All top four decks didn't play any midterm cards except for Droroid. And even that Droroid wasn't even like good. Droroid didn't even do all that much. Yeah. Like it was the, the exact same deck also made top four in one first place and didn't have any Droroids main decked. So just like, you know, take for that what you will. But the thing is, without an update to this list, without more hits to, to older cards, specifically stall leaning cards, right? Like, Except for the Conclave, every other change we made was stall focused. Mm -hmm. And I think if you make these changes, you actually allow midterm decks to kind of poke their head out of the water and be like, whoa, I can come out now. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. And, and that's that's the goal, right? Allow people who want to play new cards and new decks to actually have a chance to win. Yeah, and like, don't don't take that the wrong way. It's not that we think there's a secret like new tier one deck coming out of midterms if we make these changes, but like maybe tier two, maybe tier three. Who knows? Like something that's at right. least you know competitively viable. Whereas like right now it's just you know what everything is stall. It's either beat down or it's stall. Like it's just yeah. Yep. We, we need we need we need a change. We need it now, Konami, please. Um, yeah, Konami. It's been it's been like almost a month since the extrav, right? Like this, you've had enough time to evaluate the results. Do something. Yeah, because like without a change, kind of what you're talking about. From midterms, basically does nothing, which means from GX box to Shadow Riders box, we basically have a year of the same format, which like is exactly what we were well, hoping to avoid. Since Bandless came out, we have a year of the same That's format. Right. So essentially, since Niagara, we we're gonna have the same format until Shadow Riders, which is. Which is really bad. Uh, that's not good. Um, there's another X draft coming up in December, or it's like a, v a remote duel uh, YC, thing. remote yeah. duel something. Yeah. So that it would be really nice if we like you know, spice things up for that one rather than just they're like oh yeah, this is gonna be the exact same as the last two. Like mm -hmm. okay. But yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's all I got. All right, so yeah, that is it for us. So we want to know what you think, though. What do you think about the changes we made? Is there any changes you want to see? Try not to go crazy. Uh, what we did not want to do with this list, which we've seen some other people do when they've talked about changes to the list, is, well, if a deck is good, that means we need to hit it. And like, that's not how this works. Like, yeah, beatdown is good. Therefore, we need to like limit Banisher and limit wall and limit widespread or, you know, like just that's that's not how lists are supposed to work it's nope. when something is too far above the power level or it's unhealthy for the format in some way which those things aren't so okay, keep that in mind it was done, but you brought it up so here's my comment okay. on beatdown okay oh, um beatdown is a deck that if it was the only tier one deck right if stall didn't exist there are things i could come up with that have good matchups against beatdown the issue is almost all of those things, if not all of those decks, lose to stall. Yep. Completely and absolutely. Because yep. the so answers the to beat down are useless against stall. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and that's the thing, right? It's a lot easier to counter a deck that is actually trying to play the game and, and, and trying to win it by attacking you than it is to counter that deck, but then also have to worry about an equally as powerful and equally as played deck that does the exact opposite. Right. Which is essentially preventing you from playing the game. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. 
Okay, there you go. Uh, all right, so with all that in mind, yep, let us know in the comments uh, what you think. What would you want to change with the list? What do you think about the changes we made? Uh, do you think we're geniuses? Do you think we're crazy? Let us know in the comments uh, how you feel. Uh, that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you for sticking it out. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. Um, so until next time, as always, my friends, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Good luck in all of your games, and we will see you soon. Thank you.